In this video we're going to look in how we're going to build our own protection devices. And commercially there are three predominant devices that are used as we have here. First one here is a gas discharge tube and it's basically a spark gap inside of a capsule of inert gas. To its left we have a TVS diode or transit voltage suppressor diode. To the right we have an MOV or a metal oxide varistor. Well right away I can rule this out because you cannot find these for much anything lower than 90 volts and all of these devices have a failure mode and they don't last forever and they will eventually fail and when this fails it tends to short out when this fails it tends to overheat and eventually open this can overheat enough that you can actually catch fire what typically is done is a thermal fuse is put in series with an MOV and they're usually touching like that or very close so if this overheats this thermal fuse will blow and the thermal fuse is different than a standard fuse where a standard fuse blows with overcurrent a thermal fuse blows with overheat and in fact you can buy some MOVs which are typically called TMOVs that actually have that fuse built in they were kind of limited to the 120 volt range and in fact if you have an EMS system or a surge suppressor on your shore powering RV it's likely to have MOVs. So the fact that we have to add a thermal fuse, uh, we're not going to use those. These are going to be sufficient. This is a TVS diode. And you can get these either in a single direction or a bi-direction. Single direction would be for DC applications and a bi-directional one would be for AC applications. And there's a stripe on one end for the single direction ones. And you got to get them in the circuit the right way, otherwise it'll short the circuit out. So what happens when this thing shorts out due to failure? It's going to blow the fuse that is protecting the branch circuit. The problem with that is once that blows the branch circuit, if you have four or five devices on your circuit, they're all going to go out. And you're not going to know why that fuse is blowing until you check every device that's on that circuit. And what I like to do is put a dedicated fuse, like this inline fuse, in series with this TVS diode. So when the diode blows, it'll blow the fuse and basically take itself out of the circuit and the circuit can remain operational. So that's how I build them for my use. And these are all the various surge suppressors that I have built and they're all available on the website. So basically you'd go in and download the circuit board for the surge suppressor you want and then you just order it. And like all the OSH Park circuit boards, you got to order them in quantities of three. But these are, you know, one to two dollars to three dollars maybe uh, for a set of three, so they're not that expensive. And so first what I have is this square one is designed to be potted into this little box. So it'll fit in like that. This can handle several different types of TVS. We have on this side a high current TVS here and here. And if you flip it over, then we have lower current TVS here and here, along with a fuse and uh, a current limiting resistor for the LED. What I mean by potting is that you pour actually some black colored epoxy in here. And this is what you end up with. You've probably seen these. This is, you know, hardened hair. Here's the LED. And you can build this as a low power or high power with either one or two protectors so this will protect one or two circuits and this one is a single circuit that I made out of, out of this and uh, next up is an inline one which is this one and it's only a single sided so there is no high power and low power version and this is a fairly high power TVS here however if you want to use a low power one even though these are surface mount, you could take a TVS diode, cut the ends off, and solder it right on to the pad like that. So just for these two pads here. And then again the fuse goes here, and an LED, and a dropping resistor. And when you're done building that, and you put the leads on, we have this clear plastic heat shrink that you can put over that. And that's what this is. This is a completed version of this board here. And so this just goes in line with whatever device you're wanting to protect. 
So for example, you have a puck light like this. You could wire this in line with a puck light and it would work. With the one or two circuits, you know, you might want to put this next to a, a switch on a console or something. And then finally, these last three are for LED strips. And in fact, if you have a monochrome LED strip, of course, you'd want to use this. This is for an RGB LED, and this is for an RGB LED, and this is for an RGBW LED. And the difference between these are, these two are through hole, so for these two, you would put your devices through here and solder them like that. And this last one is a service mount. So it just depends on the type that you're comfortable with making. And this is what it looks like when you're done. Again, this has got that clear heat shrink on here. And you just plug your LED into there. And then just plug this going down to the power or vice versa. And that will protect your LED. Now in this device and this device, I have an LED in here. And the LED will be lit whenever this circuit is still good. So in other words, if the fuse is not blown, and by the way, you really don't want to repair these because if it blows a fuse, this is shot anyway, you might as well just build another one because they're so cheap to build, especially with this with a potting in it. You can't get this out. And with the RGB and RGBW LED strip versions, there are no LEDs in here because you'd have to have three of them or four of them, and that just you know becomes a little bit hard to do on a small board like that. There is, on the back here, a little explanation on how with the ohmmeter you can test this board to make sure it's okay. Of course, you have to unplug it like this, but you can take an ohmmeter and test each one of these little pads here, and you can find out if this is still good or not. All right, so we're going to build, as a demonstration, we're going to build one of these. Again, go to my website because I show you the part sources and what values I recommend and such. Now, you have to pay attention to the polarity of this but these are the two TVS this is the fuse this is a current limiting resistor for the LED and that's the LED itself and when you do SMD it's always the easiest just to use just a little bit of flux because it makes the parts uh, solder a little better and these are 1206 resistors which are about the largest you can get and I did that purposely because it, you know I want to keep it easy for um, novices basically and I usually like to just put a little on here and let the part come to me we got that part in we'll turn it around and we'll do the other side we've got the current limiting resistor for the LED in place and then next up I'm going to select a 2 amp fuse now this fuse is not for the item being powered. It is for the TVS diodes only in case they blow. And then again, just a little bit of flux. And there's usually a marking on here. Now I always like to put the marking up so in the future we can see what we have. And with this particular layout, only L1, which is actually the white lead, is connected to the LED. So there we go, the LED is on, which means that the fuse is okay. And so if you look at the red, it doesn't turn the LED on because it does not go through the LED. It just goes through the fuse. And if you want to look at the drawing on the website, it'll be self-explanatory. So then the last step is just to put this in here and just fill it up with potting compound just enough so that it covers the components, yet it does not cover the LED. And now the potting compound that I'm going to use is made by MG Chemicals, and this stuff is black one-to-one -one epoxy. And it's about 10 bucks, but you're going to get, you know, six or seven uh, pours out of this. And you want to mix it up really good. All right, so now we have our device here, and we're just going to help prop it up a little bit. 
And we're just going to pour some in here. And as usual, I probably mixed too much. Now, if you have any holes in the bottom of this case, for instance, the stuff will go right through it. So it will make a mess. And this boxes actually are designed uh, for potting. Now this does take basically 24 hours to cure. So you don't have to be in a real rush. There you go. So we're going to let this set. And finally when you build this, I always like to mark the voltage on it with, you know, one of these Sharpies. So that concludes the video on building these protectors and I'm going to have a third video on how you would typically install them in your RV. So again, please subscribe to my channel and when the next video comes out, you will be notified.